This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hi guys, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the new gear we acquired for our upcoming bicycle tour. The idea is to be more immersed in nature going forward. A big step into achieving our goal is to go lighter and compacter than on our two year world tour. Less weight means a more easygoing experience while climbing and possibly pushing our bikes through the backcountry. So I am upgrading and replacing a few key items in my setup and stay around until the end of the video where I give you the total weight savings. First up is the sleeping mat. Here I have my old expat mat versus the new Sea to Summit Etherlite XT. The old expat mat was pretty great but I had some trouble with it. It formed a small leak that was impossible to find and also as a side sleeper the vertical baffling stopped me from turning really easily at night causing me to wake up every so often. The Sea to Summit Ether Light comes in at almost 400 grams lighter and after sleeping on it for more than a week I can say the comfort level of this mat is superior to the old expat one. It uses a unique air sprung cell technology what kind of mimics a box spring mattress. In my experience this causes to relieve pressure points way better and making me turn more easily letting me have a better night's sleep. So the mat here in the tent and this is the stuff sack that also converts to a pump sack. You insert it here in the corner so then you can blow into the pump sack and then you can squeeze the air into the mattress. In my experience a great upgrade of course sleeping is very important so I want to invest in that. Next up is the sleeping bag. Here's my Ray Mears versus the Ray Jardine style quilt that I made myself at home. The Ray Mears sleeping bag served me well on our two year world tour. I like the warmth and the central sip, but because it's a mummy bag, I still feel confined in it. My homemade quilt cuts down on weight because it's open at the underside, making it feel more like a blanket you would use at home. The downside is because it's not fully enclosed, there's a possibility for drafts to get in. So around the inside perimeter there's an extra piece of fabric sewn in to stop the drafts. The insulation value is a bit lower, so I have to get creative with my layers on cold nights. I keep it in this 12 liter dry bag, what creates an extra protection layer against moisture. I appreciate this style will not be for everybody, but I believe that it will help me to get better night's sleep. A pillow I find is also very important for a good night's sleep. Here we have a thermo rest against the new Sea to Summit Arrows. After using my clothes stuffed in a stuff sack as a pillow, the thermo rest was a great upgrade, but it didn't really give the support that I wanted. The Arrows pillow is different in that it's a blow up style, making it super compact when stuffed away in this little stuff sack. I was worried that it would have a balloon bouncy feel, but it feels very stable and comfortable. You can easily tune the air pressure to get the desired support you need. I found it for two thirds of the retail price, making it good value for money. Another upgrade brings me to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Surfshark provides us with a VPN service, but what is a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It hides your IP address and protects your identity by encrypting the data between the computer and the internet to safeguard your personal information. We feel that it's important to protect against hackers trying to steal our personal information. We often use local open networks to log on to the internet, which are ideal places for hackers to get into our computers. Another benefit is when you want to see a favorite television series on Netflix and it's not available in your country you can change the IP address to a different one and open up the possibility to more series and films. So if you want to protect your online life, you can use our code WTW for a 83% discount and the first three months for free. There's a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it. Click the link down in the description to get started. Our old pots and pans needed replacements, so we swapped them out for this titanium set. The combined capacity of these two pans were great for us. The stainless steel pan developed some issues with the handles coming loose, making it very difficult and uncomfortable to maneuver the pan when it gets hot. The Morse bush pot has great features like butterfly handles and a bale, making it my favorite pot I ever used. 
the 1.8 liters is my preferred size for a solo. A kind of dumb mistake on my side was that I scratched up the inner hard anodized aluminium surface with this plastic pot where I kept my inner tubes. The bare aluminium shining through now isn't ideal in my opinion. We loved cooking with our old setup so the new one mimics the old. Of course titanium is much lighter and completely food safe. Around 3 liters this pan is a great size for making one pot meals for two persons. The light material makes it a little bit more difficult to cook on, so if you have any tips please leave them down in the comments below. The small pot Maudi got for her birthday, with folding butterfly handles and a bale just like the Moors bush pot. It's a great companion next to the bigger pan, so we can make hot water for tea, coffee or couscous and use it in the morning and during midday breaks. The Zillus Hotmuck you saw in many videos is a great coffee maker. Unfortunately I lost the filter part and also because I'm deciding to drink less coffee I upgraded to this small titanium one. The pots and pans come with these nice semi-transparent pouches. We will change them out for fully enclosed pouches because we want to cook on fire and protect against soot. A good mid layer is also very important in staying warm. On our big tour I carried the Wool Power Full Sip jacket. Really nicely made, it's long, it's warm. The turtleneck and thumb loops really make it snug. The only downside is, it's quite bulky and heavy. I got some discount coupons because I work at Decathlon. So I got this 4 class Trek 100 body warmer for free. It's lightweight and in my experience even warmer than the Wool Power mid layer. A new helmet was really necessary because I beat up my old one. I swapped it out for Decathlon Van Rysel. The gyro helmet really served me well. The only complaint I have was kind of a vanity issue that it wasn't really fashionable. The outer shell really got cracked up and I also fell on it once so it was time for a replacement. Here I'm looking a bit serious trying to present you with this new helmet I got. I think it really looks nice but more importantly it's lightweight and very comfortable to wear and I got lucky again with coupons for Christmas. When things get compacter you can also do with smaller bags. The downside of big bags I find is that I always find an excuse to put more in there. Limiting yourself in bag size really forces you to think carefully about the gear that is most important. My new 31 liter rack pack comes in this cool olive color and was a present for my birthday. The big rear panniers I swapped out for the Ortley Pack Roller Plus 20 liter. I bought them used on the second hand market for about half price. They're still in great shape and together with the 31 liter rack pack make for a more slender rear end compared to the old bag setup and I'm really curious how it will maneuver through some tough terrain. Because we make adventure videos we feel that a tripod is a real asset and the new Surrey tripod takes about a kilo off without losing too much on functionality. They're great for static shots so we can film the both of us riding down the road as you see here. Also filming and making photos while inside camp we do a lot. And the best time lapses are made by stitching together multiple photos with a longer exposure time. Our older Manfrotto tripod has a video fluid head. In the end we never used it because we pan by hand and when stabilized in post it gives a great result. This kind of orbital panning is also done by hand and I think it looks pretty good. Here you see the ball head with the Arca Swiss base plate. And instead of clamp locks like on the Manfrotto, here the legs have twist locks making it more streamlined. That was the overview of the key items I replaced. Now let's look at the total weight savings. So the old gear came in at 10.37 kilograms. The new gear came in at 6.01 kilograms, making the total weight savings 4.0. 36 kilograms. I hope you got some insights into the gear I took on my two year world tour and the items I replaced it with. That's to say that the items I took I think were really good with some minor issues but for the most part I can still recommend them. I'm really hoping that the new gear will enable me to have a better experience especially in the backcountry. Gear isn't everything your mindset and the way you experience the whole trip that's way more important but of course all small things help and hopefully this does as well if you would like to like subscribe and hit the bell that helps us and the channel out a lot so thank you for that 
up here we're gonna put some extra videos for you guys to watch we would like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video helping us pay the bills and bringing you more content like this and we'll see you guys in the next one